Hello. I wanted to share with you um, a salt ceremony. Now, we've all heard of the sand ceremony, um, but salt has different kinds of properties and different elements that uh, I like to use in the ceremony. Um, salt has always been used throughout the years as a purifier, uh, as a preservative, preserved meat, for example. So you can use this analogy as salt being a, a purifier for your ceremony, for the marriage, uh, preserving the marriage, preserving the vows. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this one. Um, salt actually figures quite highly in the Old Testament. I know most of us don't do religious ceremonies, but it does feature uh, the salt covenant was never taken lightly um, from what I remember of my biblical studies back at schools. Um, we have the saying, a pinch of salt. Um, take it with a pinch of salt. We can work that into our ceremony. Um, there used to be a ceremony, I think it was um, in Arabic times, where you had salt in your pouch. Salt was very critical to survival. If, uh, if you imagine you're crossing the desert and you're going to sweat a lot, and you're going to lose salt. Um, and you had salt in your pouch. And if you made a deal with someone, you would take salt from your pouch and put it into their pouch. And just as with a sand ceremony, you can't separate the grains of salt, you can't separate the grains of sand, so that then sealed the salt covenant. Um, I've done a little bit of research, and apparently salt ceremonies feature in Irish wedding ceremonies, they feature in Indian wedding ceremonies as well. Now, I have a little tip for you, and this is from being a primary school teacher. What I'm going to do, it's like Blue Peter, I'm going to colour my salt. So, I have got some ordinary white fine cooking salt, which I'm going to pour in there. And because blending white salt with white salt isn't terribly exciting for the guests uh, who are watching your ceremony, what you might like to do is get some ordinary chalk. So this is just school chalk, kids chalk, very, very cheap. Get your grater and use a, the fine side. I'm just going to stand up a little bit for this. And what you do is simply use grate your chalk into your salt. I'm just using about a third of a piece of chalk here. Oops, there goes a lump. It's quite nice if you have got some little lumps in there, because you get to see the colour a bit better. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, I've got a bit of chalk, a bit of salt, get a spoon, mix it up. What was white salt is now lilac salt. So I have my handy funnel, my handy bottle. Just going to pour my salt into my bottle. Ooh. Probably spill it. Something about good luck and bad luck with salt, isn't there as well? I've put that into the ceremony. Spill salt and then throw it over your right, right shoulder, left shoulder. I'm not sure. But there are so many analogies that you can make with salt that you can't make with sand. But boring old white salt is now sexy lilac salt. So this isn't very good light because I'm doing this in the in the dark. Um, but if I put the white next to it, I might see a little bit of a colour change. I've got lilac, I've got some blue that I did earlier. But yeah, it just helps you visualise the mixing of the two colours, like we mix coloured sand. Just exactly the same. 
So there it is, the salt ceremony. Um, it's a unity uh, ceremony. It's symbolizing an unbroken agreement or covenant. Um, be aware, um, where I am in southern Spain, it's quite humid in the summer. So salt, humidity, not terribly clever. So the uh, best thing to do is to cover up your bottle prior to the ceremony with some cling film. So the humidity doesn't get in. Um, and if you're still not sure, a couple of grains of rice. Rice always does the trick, doesn't it? Soaks up the, the humidity, the bit of damp. So here we have our salt ceremony. Thank you for watching.